Welcome to the FinTech One-on-One Podcast. This is Peter Renton, Chairman and Co-Founder of FinTech Nexus. I've been doing this show since 2013, which makes this the longest-running one-on-one interview show in all of FinTech. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you like this podcast, you should check out our sister shows, The FinTech Blueprint with Lex Sokolin and FinTech Coffee Break with Isabel Castro, or listen to everything we produce by subscribing to the FinTech Nexus podcast channel. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our comprehensive news service. FinTech Nexus News not only covers the biggest FinTech news stories, our daily newsletter delivers the most important FinTech stories into your inbox every morning with special commentary on the top story of the day. Stay on top of FinTech news by subscribing at news.fintechnexus.com slash subscribe. Today on the show, I'm delighted to welcome Aaron Schwartzkoff. He is the CEO and co-founder of Kushki. Now, Kushki is a really interesting company. They are building the payments infrastructure for Latin America, and they've been at this for a few years now and wanted to get Aaron on the show just to delve deeply into this infrastructure that they're building. And we do talk about, obviously, what Kushki does and how they how they work, the type of companies that are using their services. We also talk more broadly about the challenges of building uh, a fintech company in Latin America. We talk about the prevalence of cash and how that is um, impeding or not the growth of fintech. We talk about instant payments. Uh, We talk about regulation, uh, their acquisition they did last year in Mexico. We talk about the recent report they did with Statista and also about data in general and why the data in Latin America can be misleading. It was a fascinating discussion. Hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast, Aaron. Hey, Peter. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So let's get started by giving the listeners uh, a little bit of background about yourself. Um, I know you've been doing Kushki for a little while now, but why don't you tell us some of the the highlights of your career to date? I'm 35 years old. Uh, I'm a parent of, of three beautiful girls, and I... Uh... I was raised in Latin America in Quito, Ecuador, then had the luck to, you know, do my studies uh, both in the United States and China. As I was finishing university in the United States, I accidentally encountered payments uh, and I started my first company there when I was 20 years old. Mm. That company ended up growing and sold to an acquiring bank in the United States. When that chapter ended, Myself and, and the founder of that company is also another Ecuadorian living in the United States called Sebastian. We both uh, were very curious about back home, basically, mm-hmm. you know, how the, the tech scene in general or you know, how can we could innovate in the region. And that's kind of the underpinnings of how Kushki started. You know, back in, in Latin America, what was the sort of the drive to start Kushki as far as launching? What did you launch with? Yeah, so before launch, it was probably first, you know, we were first very, very excited about the region as a whole, right? We we saw it kind of like the promised land, right? You know, in our lifetime, it's going to be a billion plus people. Most of the population, you know, more than half are millennials and younger. Right. One quarter of the population are Gen Zs, right? It's the population that forgot about analog, right? And, and forgot about all these conceptions of the world of, you know, being mobile or analog or you know payments or cash or whatnot it's just people are early adopters and alpha consumers and anything they do right so we actually got their first investing and as we were going around investing in technology startups we saw this gigantic hole right which was uh payment infrastructure for some odd reason right in latin america it's kind of the last corner on earth where we haven't commoditized this, right? Uh, right. Uh, like, like everywhere else, right? And there's th- there were three big problems there. The the first one was fragmentation, regardless if it's cards or some sort of you know account to account based payment, right? It's incredibly fragmented, right? Within the region, within countries, sometimes as well, right? The second one is the the actual technology. Most of the stuff that carries all of the volume, right, of transactions in Latin America was built by people in languages that don't exist anymore, right? They've either retired 
are dead and those languages are not used Gee. anymore. And, you know, we're just holding on to this like old infrastructure that won't last. Here come us and we're like, we actually know about payments. <laughs> and we actually know about Latin America. What are the odds? And as we continued, uh, you know, thinking about Kushki, that's how we said, you know, kind of have this big ambition to turn Kushki into one of the pillars required to the new economy, right? So like if Latin America is going to prosper, it's going to need really good infrastructure to move money from one point to the other. And that was the whole premises of Kushki. And uh, it's incredibly broad, to be quite frank uh, mm -hmm. and ambitious, but that's how we started it, more or less. And, and kind of the idea was we would like to be one of the pillars in which uh, the new economy stands on in Latin America, right? When it right, comes to right. being able to accept payments and transact. Okay, great. So before we get right into Kushki, I want to sort of step back and let's look at the the payments landscape over the last you know five six years since you launched uh, Kushki. There has been a lot of things happen in the payments space in Latin America, um, and it's a very different space to what it was when you started. But maybe you could talk about just describe how has it changed overall in in Latin America? How has the payment landscapes changed? The thing I like the most is that there's now optimism around the, <laughs> the payment devolution in Latin America. When we started, it was all monopolies, regulation that didn't exist, uh, and, and pretty much cash will be king forever and nothing else works, right? And today, even though there's still monopolies and there's still some you know regulation that, that can improve, everybody's an optimist and the numbers are starting to show, right? Latin America is one of the fastest uh, growing digital payment place in the world. In some countries, right, cash usage has dwindled so much that in comparison to places like the United States and some places in Europe, you know, there's less cash usage in some of the countries in Latin America, right? So you can actually start seeing the evolution, right? In terms of the payments landscape to, to what we do, I, I do think that there's some things that remain unchanged quite a bit, right? It's still incredibly hard, right, for businesses to navigate payments in Latin America today. I think it's just the beginning. And the reason is the fragmentation continues to be there. There's very few of us who have tried to consolidate the region, right, to kill the fragmentation. And there's very few of us uh, that are truly local in helping the businesses, right, figure all the local nuances required to, to operate successfully as well as to have a next generation pipeline, right? You know, today, most of the commerce goes through monopolies that still exist. And those monopolies sit on very bad technology or incredibly closed uh, minded. There's some things that remain unchanged, right? But right. probably the, the biggest thing is <laughs> evolution's here to stay. There's kind of like a, a consensus and optimism that this is changing quite fast and everybody's incredibly excited to do it. So that that makes me really really happy. Other than been incredible success launches in in, in things that, that reduce cash outside of credit cards and wire transfers. You know, we have a lot of real time payments rails launching and wallets launching in Latin America that are gaining crazy amount of success as well. Right. So, yeah, for sure. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Let's get into Kushki. What? How do you describe the company? What do you guys offer? The company is very simple. Like, Kushki was made to be the infrastructure to move money in Latin America. And the whole mission of the company, if you come to any of our offices or see our email signatures, is connecting Latin America through payments. That That's essentially what we do, right? And we started bottoms up. So literally, we've we, we've gone to build our own processor acquires, you know, our, our, our own connections into all the local switches, is figuring out all the local nuances, so make, you know, creating all the underwriting and compliance. So a vertically integrated player that sits locally in every country where we operate. And as you zoom out, right, kind of kills the whole fragmentation in the region, right? What do we provide for clients? It's it's usually APIs for them to be able to do either a pay-in or a payout, right, to their customers and between businesses. And we do that in many payment methods. In terms of, of credit cards, credit cards, even though, you know, they've gotten overshadowed in the news by, by things like PICS, it is the highest growth region in the world for credit cards by mm -hmm. far, right? You know, they're, they're actually probably the, the biggest contributor today of cash reduction, credit and debit. And we do real-time payments and we do other types of APMs as well. And we provide that that to clients in terms of pay-in. And we also do payouts where we allow people to disperse cash in a compliant, legal, technological way around the region. Right. Okay. So then 
Can you tell us who are some of the companies that you're actually, that you're working with that is using Kushki? Maybe give us an example of what they're actually doing. We, we focus on two types of clients, right? The first ones are local large enterprises, right? So uh, we serve local to local uh, payments for kind of the top enterprises regionally or locally in the countries where we work. And the second one is we serve uh, everybody else indirectly, more or less. So uh, Mm -hmm. one of the big things that we've tried to correct in Latin America, other than there was very little technology in terms of, of, you know, uh, infrastructure for payments, uh, it's also been a very closed environment controlled by monopolies, and we do the opposite. So we have a lot of clients, which are other payment players, which are ISOs, ISVs. There's a lot of platforms being built on top of Kushki that attack, you know, SMBs indirectly that attack cross-border payments, uh, things as such. Uh, so those are the two key clients that we have. In terms of integrations, you know, even though we're kind of invisible, if you go to Latin America or when you went to Latin America and, you know, you were hailing a ride or buying something online, right, or making an appointment uh, at somewhere, most probably you use Kushki in some of these countries uh, already, right? So it's mostly API based in, in what we do, and in terms of the rest of the the the, the indirect market, it's a crazy amount of stories, right? Because we're kind of opening this very close cocoon of of distribution that that was payment, especially in acquiring in cards, uh, for example. So we have a ridiculous amount of different types of platform using us from like a cross border player that reaches kind of Latin America locally, right? And where they're their they're first or last mile, if you will, to, um, you know, a bottling company, right? That is trying to build a lending product for, for like little merchants uh, in Peru or in Mexico to inventory systems, uh, to, uh, healthcare appointment systems that are building a payment scheme on top of them, right? Uh, And we are the underlying acquirer or provider of infrastructure, right? So we are super excited about that second portion of our indirect business because we're the first ones to open for business, right? And allowing people to, to, to literally build an ecosystem. Let's just dig into it a little bit. So you, there's a small business in Colombia, for example, they've got, they've been selling locally for years and they now have an online store and they want to sell to Peru or Mexico, for example, how easy is it for them to accept payments you know, from those countries to their online store in Colombia? For the majority, it's been really, really hard, right? You know, because of, of the fragmentation. We today, unfortunately, we don't do any small business directly, but we do have indirect channels. So, you know, website builders, card makers. Uh, right. That, that basically use us. And now, you know, it, it, it's like a, a, a plug and play, right? As soon as they do that, right? They're local in all of these places. So it literally, it seems like a simple effort, but took years and years. Of, right. you know, no, I can appreciate it. Infrastructure and compliance and, and regulatory stuff at the end as well, right? You know, we we are the first in many licenses in, in several countries in Latin America, basically, to be able to stand alone by ourselves and be able to do this, right? So... I, I think it's just the beginning, though, Peter, right? In terms right. of regional payments, cross-border payments. As to our scale, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like Latin America grows. You know, most payment volume is growing between 25 to 30% year over year, right? Non-cash ones, right? So it's already a crazy market that every three to four years, right, depending on the country, it doubles. But in there, right, you know, we've counted the billions of dollars, right, that, that we move uh yearly and we're always like a drop in the water still right, right? right. so it's uh and there's very few kushkis today in latin america who are actually companies that are tech forward and are trying to connect the whole ecosystem right and make it very very easy for people to navigate and you know very democratic access to, to the ecosystem right most of them are, are are legacy companies that are that are monopolies controlled by conglomerates that are that are in a single country like you know and have a lot of limitations technologically as well, right? So, so what countries are you operating in today? We focus uh, primarily in Spanish-speaking Latin America. Some of our largest countries are Mexico, Chile, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador. Okay, so then I want to just talk about, you mentioned cash. I was in Mexico not that long ago and uh, still seeing people lining up at the ATM on a Friday afternoon and 
cash is still everywhere, it feels like, in Mexico. Is this a major impediment to growth, to the growth of digital payments? I, I actually think it's the opposite, right? You know, it's, it's when you think about land of opportunity or greenfield opportunity, mm-hmm. having a large amount of population using cash for mundane activities, right? So, you know, for paying something in retail or paying their, you know, utility bill or whatnot, it, it's like a dream come true for entrepreneurs like me, right? Because there's everything wrong with it and it, it and and you know it, it's uncomfortable it's unsafe it's dirty it's it, it's everything right? and all around the region it's starting to change quite fast right so even though mexico today is probably the one that needs the most improvement right in, in cash reduction the amount that cash is being reduced year over year in mexico is, is really really fast it's actually one of the fastest right mm. and then you have examples uh you, you have examples of things that were that were crazy fast, or like, you know, uh, kind of this exponential effect, like in Chile, for example. In Chile, they went into lockdown because of COVID. And after COVID, now the usage both on and offline of cash uh, in big box retailers is less than 6%. So actually, you know, people use less cash in Chile within, you know, a year of lockdown than, than in the US now. And then you have phenomenons. Of course, it's, it, it's not in every fraction of the economy, but you know, it's mostly on P2P stuff. But you have phenomenons like Yapa in Peru or Pix in yeah. Brazil, which basically have made cash be, you know, uh, completely uh, uh, eliminated from like a whole portion of, uh, of the economy, right? You know, uh, in terms of usage, right? So a lot of payment flows where, where cash no longer exists, right? Like in Brazil, it's, it's funny in Brazil, you can buy a coconut in the beach and, you know, nobody takes cash, everybody takes pics. This is something that, you know, five years ago would have been unheard of. Right, would have been considered impossible, right? That's correct. I, I don't see it as an impediment. I actually see it, you know, it is completely correlated to, to the payment, the, the electronic or digital payments industry growing 25 to 30% year over year in Latin America. Does PIX, I mean, obviously not in Brazil, but, you know, you mentioned Yape in Peru, which hasn't quite got the traction of PIX, but still has pretty significant traction. Are those things helping as far as, you know, when, once you digitize payments, I imagine for a company like Kushki, then you're you're open to other digital methods, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? So, uh Credit and debit card is our core today, right? But but the whole infrastructure was created um, to be able to take any payment method in general. And today, in terms of APMs, be it real time payments, wallets, and whatnot, we have over twenty in the co- regionally in in the company, and we're always adding more, right? So it, it's actually part of our mission. The, the only thing we don't do is cash, basically. So right, th- these things are actually very very helpful, right? And we actually move move a lot of volume outside, you know, with APMs. Things such as real time payments uh, and wallets, right? So, it, it, and in some in some countries, it's growing quite quite fast, right? Okay, so then you're originally from Ecuador, and you know the government of Ecuador has designated Kushki as the first payment aggregator. Maybe you can explain what that means and what is the significance of that. You know, we started the business in Ecuador. Uh, it was the first country we started operations in in, in Latin America. And it was one of the countries that is probably the furthest behind in, in regulation for payments, right? So it's not uncommon in, in Ecuador to, you know, wait months to be able to accept payments on or offline, right? Having to go to different providers locally to be able to have all the payment methods you need, right? You know, or or acceptance methods that you need. So we, we've been trying to innovate there for a while and, and we were able to open and democratize access for, for the ecosystem to have technology companies, right? So now a technology company, someone that's not a bank can actually participate in the system. And that's what the payment aggregator means. It's, it's similar to payment facilitator in general, but it was the first win that, again, brings the optimism. You know, we've been we've been kind of doing the hard work in e- each of these countries, uh, building the plumbing and trying to educate and, and, you know, create an evolution on the ecosystem. And uh, what we did in Ecuador was, was fantastic, right? Because it's not open now. You know, we were the first ones, obviously, but I, I, I think there's 20 now, right? You know, with, within the year that, that we built it, wow. right? we started creating the ecosystem. And and there's a lot of examples like that, right? Where some of the fintechs get together. And the nice thing in Latin America is that um, in most part, the, the regulators are really, really interested in, in involving this. They just, you know, didn't have the knowledge for it, right? So I think it was a match made in heaven, you know, of getting payment experts and technology experts to speak with regulators to make 
to make this happen, right? A good example of that is Brazil. Brazil's, Brazil's at the at the head of the curve of payment innovation in, in Latin America and, and democratizing access, right? So give an example of credit cards. Brazil 12 years ago had a duopoly basically in, in payment acquirers. And today there's more than 50, right? It's a very, it's, it's a booming sector, right? You know, it's, it's, in most of Latin America, we're, we're still behind, right? There's, you know, <laughs> now there's two players in some of these markets, right? right. The, ones, the monopoly in us, right? <laughs> so. Uh, so we're further behind, but but I think it's going to move much faster, right? And we're we're really happy of what we did in Ecuador, and you know, there's a couple more coming, right? That I think we've been working for years, you know, with the with the regulators to, to right. trend positively. Actually, the the Central Bank of Brazil has helped quite a bit, right? Because I think they're probably one of the the best examples globally, not only of Latin America, of yeah. collaboration and knowledge. Basically, uh, the stuff they're doing is, is fantastic. No, I mean, they're, they're very well respected. In fact, I was at an event at the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, and they had a guy from the Central Bank of Brazil speaking there. Very, very well respected um, internationally these days. So I want to talk about Mexico. Last year, you acquired the payment terminal provider called Bill Pocket. Tell me about what was the thinking there and what they actually do. Yeah, absolutely. So Bill Pocket was actually the first payment facilitator or payment aggregator in Mexico. It was about an 11 or 12 year old company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that did in Mexico this fight, right? To be able to have technology companies or startups join the ecosystem about a decade before Kushki did in Ecuador maybe. And, uh, and the company started as a small business MPOS player, right? Uh, within Mexico, but, uh, but eventually turned out to become the the first company in Mexico to have the underpinnings of an ISO and ISV program, right? So uh, by the time we we came across them, right, we were as as I was telling you before, we were really we really tried to endorse this indirect channel for us to be able now that we're vertically integrated, control the infrastructure, control kind of all the licenses. We've always wanted to open this up so other people could build on top of Kushki, right? And Bill Pocket's team. We're doing that successfully in Mexico, right? And we're kind of the first player that we had seen in LATAM, actually, that, that you know had something similar to an ISO and ISV and VAR uh, ecosystem. And that's the reason we we, we bought them, basically. And uh, it's been great because the team is in, super talented, right? And, and it's helped us basically to not only accelerate their plans, right, but standardize them regionally, right? So... Uh, mm. We are bringing into Latin America uh, in the months and years to come a lot of programs, right, for companies that before had no access to, you know, no easy access, right, to be able to connect or embed payments into their offering, all the way to actually being able to build payment businesses, right, you know, be it payment distribution or vertical verticalized payments or whatnot on top of us, which was kind of, it's still kind of unheard of in, in Latin America. like. If you want to build a payments business, you have to know a lot about payments, have a lot of money or a lot of connections, right? And a lot of patience to to basically connect into like the legacy grids in different places, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make it as easy as possible. If you want to build a payments business on top of Kushki, you should be able to do it in a month, right? Uh, in the whole region, right? Right, right. Okay. I want to switch gears and talk about a recent report that you released uh, with Statista, it was on the growth of the digital payments ecosystem in Latin America. We, I know you have the Kushki Talk series that you were kind enough to invite me along to one of those sessions recently. What are some of the takeaways from this particular report that you that you did with Statista? Overall, it kind of pinpoints in more detail where the growth and trends are happening in Latin America. And the whole movement around us doing reports uh, with third parties and starting these series like Kushki Talks, but by the way, thank you so much for, for being part of the last edition. My pleasure. Uh, we find that in Latin America, there's very little uh, data and very little uh, content when it comes to fintech and payments. As a matter of fact, when you compare some of the reports or data that are created by, you know, very big brands, they contradict themselves, right? Because they, they use old data sets and, and, you know, have this huge debate where, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the card brands think the fraud is gigantic in, in, in Latin America. And it really isn't, by the way, right? It's, it's kind of funny because they're all using different sets of data and the data is, you know, not very useful. In Latin America, what we're trying to do with Kushki Talks and, and reports like the one we did with Statistas 
is to be able to educate, right? And to actually be able to sponsor some real data in each of the countries. And specifically when it comes to Statista, we're speaking a lot, of, a lot about the growth in Mexico and the trends that are happening. Uh, so I was telling you about, you know, lowering cash usage, among other things uh, in Mexico. If your listeners want to, you know, pull that report of Statista, if they want to learn more detail than, you know, what you would read uh, about Mexican payments, it, it's a great way to start uh, there. Yeah. Right. I'll make sure to link to that in the show notes. Okay. So you mentioned fraud. I mean, how big of a problem is fraud in Latin America and, and what is Kushki doing to to help reduce it? Yeah. So I I have a, a good anecdote. You know, I met with the president of this this uh, large card brand and he was telling me, yeah, in Latin America, the, the fraud rates are, are insane. Right? And I was like, no, no, they're not. He was so shocked that we actually, you know, kind of went deep on it. And the issue is it, it is twofold, right? The first one's historically, the fraud rates in Latin America have been above average places like Europe and the United States. Mm -hmm. But it's because data is unstandardized, right? And how you send data in the infrastructure, right? Uh, in many ways. And, and the second one is because no one did anything about it. When you have players that are actually managing fraud and standardizing data, right, in terms of messaging and infrastructure, there really isn't that much fraud. And we're a proof of that. I think there's only a single country we're in where we hit 10% of what what the, the Visa MasterCard average of fraud for the country are, right? So we're like 10 times or better less than that in fraud, right? right. And it's not like we're geniuses. We literally have very, you know, just like modern technology and we have local competencies. So things as simple as being able to control error codes and being able to whitelist bins with the issuers locally that had, you know, very old technology to be able to, to accept payments. Right. So we do little things that are very analog actually, right. You know, to boost acceptance rates and, and, and lower fraud, it's just ecosystem building. And then it comes with a little bit of fraud technology at the end. Right. You know, we, we spend a lot of time, right, in terms of compliance and fraud, of making sure that our clients have the best they can get in Latin America, and, and it's new to the region. Like, uh, so, so yeah, there, there is still today. This is what I was telling you: is Latin America is this weird place where it's like year one, and then the rest of the region has been completely commoditized, right? You know, so things as fraud rates and acceptance rates, we see these gigantic jumps, right, where you know. Someone will will move from from the old pipes to 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 our new ones, right? And all of a sudden, they they have a fifty percent improvement in something, or a, you know, a couple right. hundred percent improvement, in something like that. That still exists in Latin America. That's what I mean, right? Like you could still do that in countries like like the U.S. It's hard to get double digit improvements on any any uh, new technology these days. Anyway, last question. I'd love to kind of end with you peering into your crystal ball and talking about the the future of digital payments in Latin America. I mean, you've talked about some of the, the downward trend of cash, but what's the future going to look like? What are you trying to build and what, what when you think of that future? In terms for us, the, the role that we have is, is an infrastructure one, right? And being a provider for large players or, or other payment businesses to be able to use us, our licenses, our infrastructure, regardless of the payment method to move money back and forth, right? So we, we don't see Kushki as an active participant in, in doing user or, or small business stuff, right? So I, I, I don't see us moving into anything that has to do uh, in terms of attacking users and doing issuing or wallets or, or things mm -hmm. of the sort, right? In terms of the crystal ball and what I think will, will happen in, in Latin America, I think the future is bright. I, I think it's a bit messy because, you know, everybody's trying stuff and trying to see what sticks on the wall and, you know, what 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 gains a lot of traction, right? So Latin America will not be a place where you will have a homogenous payment devolution like you had in China and, and a couple of other places, right? Uh, I think you'll have a little bit, there will be fragmentation, but it all points that cash will will exponentially right start disappearing from payment flows in this decade right uh, it's already happening right some countries faster than others but you know that data is there as of today what i can tell you is you have these phenomenons like pics and yape uh in, in certain places but consistently what it what is delivering you know the 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 most uh 
cash reduction in transactions and debit and credit cards, right? And they come in different forms. It's sometimes not plastic anymore, but it's the same pip- pipelines, right? You know, things like Visa Direct or most neo banks and, and wallet systems uh, that, that are gaining traction in Latin America are built on credit and debit rails today, uh, the majority of them, right? So I do think that they will continue to be a, a relevant player in Latin America when it comes to payment methods that, that are trying to to reduce cash usage. Uh, and I think real-time payments is, is uh, I think Latin America is the place for real-time payments, basically. Okay, well, it's a good place to end. Um, Aaron, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show today. Best of luck to you and let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for listening. Please go ahead and give the show a review on the podcast platform of your choice and go tell your friends and colleagues about it. Anyway, on that note, I will sign off. I very much appreciate you listening and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.